So this is for speaking part one, six common triggers. Okay. Okay. For, for example, they always use these structures. The first one is do you, for example, do you enjoy traveling? Do you play any musical instruments? Mm -hmm. Do you go out with your friends? And for this one, we have a short but very well organized answer. And that answer is, first of all, we confirm, do you play any musical instruments? And the answer is, yes, I can play the guitar very well. Sometimes, mm -hmm. even if you don't play the guitar, if you have more things to say, if you say yes, then you should say yes, because yeah. they don't, they don't uh, investigate whether you are telling the truth or not. Yeah. I'm not telling you to lie, but this is a kind of trick, just a little trick. So first confirm, and then what, what you can do is to use a very well uh, tense. It could be present perfect. And then you can use a high level grammar structure. It could be relative close. As you can see here, I have a group of friends whom, okay, mm -hmm. let's make it fun. I usually go to private studios to play together, once in a blue moon, and I want you to use a phrase, like yeah. once in a blue moon, you know, a different kind of place. So a different tense, a high level grammar structure, like relative close, and a different phrase. The, yes. the, the general question is usually, do you? Of course, you can just say, uh, yes, I do, and then finish your answer. But that's not what they expect you to do. So you will talk more, right? Yes. You, you give some details. Yeah. Let's, let's have a look at the second answer. Sorry. The second trigger is, are you good at playing the guitar? Can you read it, please? Can you read the answer? Okay. To be honest, I wouldn't say I'm gifted, but I do my best by striving, striving to practice every single day. I believe I have made a huge progress over the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. So first, uh, as I've said before, we yeah. have, we have a phrase here. For example, instead of saying yes directly, I say, to be honest, I use a different phrase here. I say, to be honest. And then one more. I don't say, so here is the thing. I don't say, I'm not gifted directly. I would say mm -hmm. indirectly. I say, I wouldn't say I am gifted. So yeah. it's, uh, it's on a whole nother level. I wouldn't yeah. say, to be honest, I wouldn't say I am gifted. But I do my best by striving. So thrive, it's an advanced level vocabulary, right? It's an advanced level vocabulary. So, and then the next part, we don't say, I have made a huge progress. We say, I believe I have made. So what do we do? We use a different phrase we use a different phrase at the beginning of the sentence and it also gives us the chance to buy time because during the exam the examiner doesn't want you to say uh all the time so you have yeah. to buy some time right yes okay so we also use a different tense such as present perfect as you can mm -hmm. see i have made a huge progress over the past couple of years. So I don't say recently, I would say over the past couple of years. Even this one is a kind of phrase. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes, over the past couple of over years. The past couple of years. So one, we use phrase, we use another one, and then we use advanced level vocabulary. A different mm -hmm. grammar structure, such as present perfect, and then a phrase. Uh, when it comes to time, there are tons of different phrases. As we have seen in the previous one, we said once in a blue moon, right? Yes. Okay, let's have a look at this one. The third 
trigger is past habits. So they would ask you a question with did you? Did you do any type of exercise when you were younger? Can you read the answer, please? Uh, back in high school, I used to go swimming every weekend to stay healthy. But when I got into university, I got extremely busy with studies. So I had to quit my habit of exercising. Mm -hmm. So here, again, we have a phrase. Instead yes. of saying, when I was in high school, we have used a different one. We said, back in high school, I used to go, I used to. It's a different grammar structure. Right, I used to go swimming every weekend, uh, but when I got into university, so here I don't say I got busy with studies, I say I got extremely busy. So I use an adverb to mm -hmm. describe the adjective, right? Yes, so I use an adverb here. So I had to quit my habit of exercising, yeah. The next one. So, even in IELTS speaking part one, the examiner will expect you to prefer, compare, and evaluate. And for that, we have a structure. For example, a simple question like, do you prefer tea or coffee, can be answered in many different ways. So, we have a structure here from one to four. Answers, reasons, examples, and alternatives. And we have given a model answer here. Uh, let's have a look at this one. The question is, do you prefer cycling or traveling by bus? Can you read it, please? Yes. Um, I much prefer cycling to traveling by bus. I tend to like cycling more as it is more convenient than traveling short distances. Besides, it's so much fun to cycle around London. Actually, it is often faster to go by bike because there is no traffic jam. Cycling is also better for my health than other means of transport, including buses. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a proper structure here that you mm -hmm. can use in exam. So you first give your answer and then provide a reason. Come up with examples. If possible, you can also say a few alternatives. Mm -hmm. For yeah. example, for cycling, we have come up with an alternative of a uh, bus, right? Yes. We yeah. have used bus as an alternative. Um, here, again, I have used the phrase. Instead of saying, I prefer, I have said, I much prefer. Mm -hmm. Let me, okay. And here, instead of saying, I like cycling, I have said, I tend to like i tend to like mm -hmm. and besides we have used a conjunction right yes conjunction and yep, yep, yep. give me a second please okay Okay, I tend to like, yes, we have used I tend to like, and here we have used besides yeah. as a conjunction, which is very important to get a high score. You must be able to use conjunctions properly. So besides, it's so much fun to cycle around London. Actually, now we have a new phrase. Sometimes we use these phrases, adverbs, as a filler. So what's a filler? A filler is something that you can hold on to buy time because mm -hmm. what you're going to say might take some time to form the idea and organize a very well structured sentence. Yes. That's why when we say actually, we might make the sound a bit longer. Actually, mm -hmm. so here, mm -hmm. listen to this. Besides, it's so much fun to cycle around London. Actually, it's often faster to go by bike because there's no traffic jam. So here, as I said, actually, I made it a bit longer because yeah. I was thinking about what to say, 
right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I bought myself some time. And yeah. then the next one, cycling is also better for my health than other means of transport, including buses. But here, including is again a kind of phrase. If you would love to add an example or an alternative, you can say including or except. For example, I prefer all kinds of transport to travel around London, but trains. Yeah. Okay, at the end, you give an exception. It's a okay. great phrase too. Okay, let's move on. The next trigger is opinion. They will ask you a question and you will be supposed to give your opinion, okay? Let's mm -hmm. have a look at how we form our opinion. Uh, I will read the question and you will read the answer. Do you okay. think the family is important? Absolutely. Family comes first. We can learn so much from our family. For example, in my family, we always have dinner together. We discuss ideas, share and learn from each other. Okay. So here, again, we start with a phrase. Absolutely. Because they know, they know that family is important, but still, it's IELTS. <laughs> they will yeah. have to ask these kinds of questions. So, again, we have a phrase, and then we have another one. Family comes first. So, I don't say family is important, because it would be just repetition of the question. Mm -hmm. So, what I need to do is to use a synonym, okay? Even yeah. if you say the same sentence again in the same round you must be able to use a synonym or antonym okay yes instead, okay. instead of important you can use significant right absolutely mm -hmm. family comes first we can learn so much from our family for example it's always good to give an example for example because it will give you uh, it will give you some time to talk more, right? In mm -hmm. my family, we always have dinner together. We discuss ideas, share and learn from each other. Good one again. Let's have a look at the second one. I, th this is the very last one. Compare and evaluate. okay? They will ask you questions to compare and evaluate. Let's have a look at this one. Which job is popular in your country? Uh, being an officer has been a common and encouraged job field for a long time. But as far as I can see, jobs related to digital currency have been on the rise in recent years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, has been a common and encouraged job. It's, it's wonderful to use a few adjectives in a row. So one after another. So I mm. didn't say a common job. I said common and encouraged job mm. yeah. for a long time. Here, as far as I can see, as far as I know, as far as I'm concerned, here we have a phrase. As far as I can see, jobs related to digital currency have been on the rise. Again, we have a different structure. That's present perfect. And we also have a different phrase, which is on the rise. Instead of saying have been rising, I've said on the rise. Mm, yes. Which is a different one, right? Have been yeah. on the rise in recent years. Okay, this is perfect. So what we are going to do now is that I'm going to give you a set of questions and then you're going to first write answers to some of them to perfect your answer. Of course, there's nothing called a perfect answer, but we have got some expectations to get a high score in IELTS. So we have yeah. got six common triggers, and these are the ones that come up most of the time in IELTS speaking part one. Are your friends mostly your age or different ages? Uh, they're mostly 
uh, my age, you know, I have many peers and uh, like uh, many of my friends are uh, my friends from university or high school. So they're my peers and uh, we are mostly at the same age, you know. Okay. Do you usually see your friends during the week or at weekends? Uh, to be honest, I don't see them because uh, since I moved to the UK, now we just, you know, um, getting in contact, uh, keeping in contact with um, online platforms, by online platforms and internet and our phones. So it can be every day uh, and every time of the day, but I don't really see them. All right. The last time you saw your friends, what did you do together? Oh, uh, let me think. Um, you know, it's it's been a lot. Well, I think um we met in Kadikai and then we went for a coffee shop. We went to a coffee shop for a drink and uh uh, we having conversa we had conversations and had fun, you know. Uh, and yeah, it it was a regular day with uh, my friends. I mean, we didn't do anything special. Mm -hmm. In what ways are your friends important to you? Um. Well, I think um, what's important to me is that they're honest, they're, they're honesty towards me, you know, and, um, and I, I'm also looking for sense of humor and um, all of my friends are funny people and they love to, you know, make jokes and um, they also love to laugh and I also love that you know laughing and making fun of each other i think these are the um key features for me to you know um be a be a friend with someone do you have any friends just like you describe oh yes yeah <laughs> i have many of them like uh like i said many of them are funny people and they're also honest and um uh you know i can um i can even share the uh saddest day of my life to them and they will find a way to make me laugh by their jokes and i think it's um priceless you know okay now i'm going to share my screen and i will give you one minute to take notes on the cue card uh, and then you can tell me your answer do you have a pen and paper with you right now yes i'm ready okay can you see my screen yes okay then your one minute has started you can take notes okay okay let me hear your answer Okay, so it's Moby. Moby is a well-known techno musician. And um, um, he has a podcast called Moby Pod, and he's actually an animal rights activist. And um, he struggled a lot with, the, with defending uh, animals' rights in general. And... Um, uh, he also like um i think he's inspiring people a lot about uh the problems animals are facing with every day and uh, he is one of the um first um vegan people in the world you know and he also made uh veganism more um um uh, popular and um uh, uh, he always uh, like 
um, in her in his songs and um, in his podcast as well, he always um, talks about animals and uh, and their rights and uh, he's giving hope for many uh, people and uh, I think it's um, it's really precious thing to do and um, he's still fighting for uh, many uh, struggles like there are many zoos uh, that um, torturing animals and uh, he's a full-time activist and I love that um, he's that um, you know uh, dedicated to his job I think it's uh, excellent and uh, I really uh, love him. I also admire his music, and uh, because like um, he's a great techno musician, and you know he is well known for his music, um, actually. But um, and yeah, he ma he made amazing music, but music. But I really um, admire the personality of him. And uh, yeah, he okay, is thanks. an activist. Okay. Perfect. So, what kind of people become famous these days? Um, I think we are not looking for a, any talent these days. You know, if you have something to say, even for five minutes, you can be famous at any time. Uh, but um. Mostly, you know, they mostly they call it nipple babies. Like it's uh, came comes from the uh, word nepotism, and it's about yeah, like being related to someone, and that's the only way to uh, explain your success. You know, and I think nowadays those people are famous and they are celebrities in general, and I don't think it's fair, but. I think it is lately. And is this different from the kind of achievement that people made famous in the past? And in what way? In what way is this different than the past? I think uh, you have to be really achieve something to be famous. You had to be really achieve something to be famous in the past. Like, you, um, you know, discovering an element or made a huge uh, thing in um, some certain industry, you know, I don't know, or be a, an amazing singer. But uh, these days, you just have to be, you just have to look good and admirable and, you know, maybe rich. And then people suddenly makes you... Uh, suddenly make you uh, famous and um, I think it's more about uh, looking and not about actual talent and I think it differs uh, like uh, in this uh, from the past you know mm -hmm. okay um, what about this one what are the good things about being famous. Are there any disadvantages? Uh, I think, um, yeah, it's good to have people's attention, you know, but uh, like having them all the time can be a struggle because they will also judge you. Like, uh, I know that, um, you know, people are mo uh, mostly admirers, admiring to, you know, admiring celebrities, but when it comes to judge, they can be really cruel and they can judge you. And um, also like there are paparazzis, paparazzis everywhere and they will follow you and they will take pictures of you that you don't want to uh, take in, you know? It can be a struggle to be a fame to be a famous person, but um, it's still I think it's still fun to you know 
being known about many people, uh, being known from uh, from many people and by many people, and um, being rich because basically you have many audience you have an audience and that uh, they can influence and it will bring you money that's cool uh, why do you think ordinary people are interested in the lives of famous people oh i think um it's because it's like Famous people's lives is really interesting. I think it's because of that. Like they don't live regular life. They, you know, get on uh, private jets and, um, uh, you know, they can uh, buy whatever they want. And um, actually, uh, and they also, uh, they are marketing this so uh, successfully that many people admire their lifestyles because our ordinary people have you know um boring lives we are commuting and we are like we are actually doing the same thing the same things and um it's a bit monotone and i think uh celebrities have a vivid lifestyle and they can go everywhere and every country and i think it's because their life is actually fun okay how does the media in your country treat famous people um i i, I won't say they are doing their best you know uh they i think they can be rude sometimes, but uh, I know that uh, in the United States, paparazzi really, you know, uh, goes crazy, but um, it's not like that. It's not that intense in Turkey, but still there is some, uh, you know, rude people. And uh, I think they're judging the celebrities so much and they are targeting them for uh, many subjects and, um, I, I won't say that they are the kindest, but also they're not the rudest ones when, you know, comparing to, you know, the USA. But uh, yeah, they're still, I think they should learn how to behave uh, to people because it doesn't give you any right uh, to judge a person or targeting a person, um, you know, even, even if uh, he or she is a famous person mm -hmm. okay thank you very much my pleasure thank you <laughs> how do you rate your speaking what do you think are your strengths well i think um uh... I didn't my best. I I didn't do my best, you know. I got really nervous. <laughs> I don't know why, but really? I because you got into exam mentality. Yes, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> my heart started to beating fast and um I don't know why like I have to get rid of this. Um I have to prepare for the real exam, but I can't chill. I don't know why. <laughs> well, you can do it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. And uh, I think the uh, the struggle was for me the questions about friends because actually I lied. I don't have many friends, and I I'm not you know good at making friendships and uh, having a friendship. You know. Um, and <laughs> I just couldn't generate any ideas. So, and um, it started a bit bad. So it also continued uh, also, you know, um, problematic. And I guess for the part two section, uh, a well-known person, you know, I just, I couldn't decide uh, who I 
go with, you know, who should I go with? And uh, I just called Moby, but I don't know if, like, if he, I think he's, you know, he's a famous person, but I might be, um, I might made a mistake about uh, answering answering that questions with Moby, with a techno musician. I think I should have said a uh, more uh, famous person by everyone, you know, because well-known pe- person, like, but I couldn't decide whom to say. Yeah, okay. And what's your strength? Um, what's my strength? Uh, uh, I, I think I was a bit, you know, quite fluent. I think it was okay. I, I didn't uh, wait for a word to come to my to come to my mind you know because i uh sometimes do that i just stuck you know i think so too that's your strength uh yeah your strength is to be fluent but you need to add more advanced level vocabulary and and a range of grammar to your speech. It will mm-hmm. boost up your it will boost up your score. Otherwise, yes, I agree that you're fluent, but uh fluency without a range of grammar and uh, and accuracy of course and advanced level vocabulary would not suffice. So it wouldn't be enough. You have to do more than that. Yes, exactly. And one tip that I usually give my students is that, let's say they ask you a question. Uh, when was the last time you went out with your friends? Although you might have a very boring life and your days are very ordinary and regular, you can still make something up. You can talk about your best day in your life full of activities rather than saying it was just a normal day. Because when they ask you to describe something, it's your chance to show off your skill. Mm, yeah, right? yeah. To show off your skill. So if you answer a question as yes, and if you have more, than, more to talk, then you should say yes instead of no for example do you go out with your friends it's a very juicy topic it would be a waste of energy to say that you don't go out yeah if you say no i don't it means that there is nothing to do in that case the examiner will have to ask you new questions and new questions might not might not be as easy as the first ones yeah okay that's why once you see the opportunity to talk about a topic you should take it it doesn't have to be real it doesn't have to be a hundred percent true but still uh of course you can't say i have been to the moon before i'm not expecting you to say that of course not uh but it doesn't have to be a hundred percent real I've seen people make up stories in exams and you say, I know it's absolute bullshit. I don't believe that. But deep down, you have to give give them their school that they deserve. Otherwise, yeah, it would be like Turkey. (laughs) So what you can do is to, I will give you a few things to watch. You should Mm -hmm. watch one of my videos. It's a live class. It's a class that I have had before, but that's okay. You can still watch the recording and mm-hmm. learn from it because the recording is very beneficial. Yeah, one of the th- one of the things that I needed to mention is grammatical range and accuracy. And the one thing is to always go for a juicy topic. For example, when I was in prep school, they asked me if the military service should be compulsory. Normally... <clears throat> I would say, no, it absolutely shouldn't be compulsory. Mm -hmm. But 
during the exam, it came to my mind that there are more things to talk about if I say yes. So I said yes. Although yeah. it, it contradicted my beliefs and thoughts, I still went for it because there, the person who is interviewing you is not looking for a mistake that you're going to make. They are going to believe in whatever you say. Sometimes you can make up stories. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I will. You know. Um. I'm going to study on that. Yeah, you don't have to be realistic, uh, true all the time. It's an exam after all. One of the students said they, uh, she has been to Africa and um, it was a kind of two. I was shocked, but I didn't ask during the exam. But after the exam, she told me that the lie, with the, the part with the lion is a lie. But that's okay because she could talk very well. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, have you understood what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. it's not something bad. It's just a kind of a uh, trick, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so true. I will, I will show you some videos to watch. Okay. I will send them via WhatsApp. Okay. 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 But you are very fluent. That's uh, something positive. Mm -hmm. uh, you're fluent, that's good. I'm happy to hear that. Uh, let's go one more time. Do you have any questions before that? No. Perfect. I'm also recording the class and keeping a time. It should be like around 14 minutes. It okay. might be shorter depending on your answer. Mm -hmm. Let's say if they are satisfied with the with your answer, they just expand the duration. Yes. Okay. Okay. And now I'm going to say ask another set of questions. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. So the so and one more time in speaking part one, I will send you again a video and materials for part one. The goal is to reach at least forty seconds or fifty seconds of talking time. If you keep the answer very very short, you won't be able to get scores. Okay. For example, if the question is. Do you go to work on Sundays? If you just say yes, it yeah. would be an empty person. Yes, okay. You should say yes and then why? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Okay. So my, my first question is, let me take the time. It is something that you are, that you are familiar with. Uh, the previous one was 14 minutes. Yeah, let's get started. Okay. So, do you enjoy traveling? Uh, yes, I really enjoy traveling and see new places. And um, uh, when I do, I usually, you know, try to uh, uh, get off the beating track, you know, and I'm trying to... Um, discover places that local people usually go mm -hmm. nice have you done much traveling um well it's never enough for me you know when it comes to travel but yeah i traveled a lot um and i i saw many places many countries but i'm still willing to see more uh, especially um European countries because I really love the buildings in general and I also love the people. Mm -hmm. And 
what do you think is the best way to travel? Alone, oh. with a group, or solo travel? What, what, which one is favorite for you? Well, I think um, with a group might be a bit problematic, but also being alone can also be, you know, problematic because uh, if you're alone, it can be a little bit boring for most people. And I know that uh, many people would say that I love to travel alone, but I'm not that kind of person. So I would say traveling with a special person, you know, and um, it can be two per persons or two people or three people, that, but um, uh, when it comes to a group, it can also be a struggle because everything everyone wants to you know uh, see another place so it will be a little bit problematic but when you with a special person uh, it will uh, both be uh, it will be fun and you know also a special journey for both of you I think it's the best way to travel Okay, you talked about a person. So let's say if you were going on a long trip, who would you prefer to go with and why? I think I would say my boyfriend because um, I really want him to see everything that I saw. You know, I um, also, uh, I, I love to uh, tell about what I saw to him and uh, when we are together if, if we are together it will be better because like we will be experiencing the same views <laughs> and uh, I think um, I found him really funny and it will make uh, my long journey a little less boring you know and also uh, he took um excellent photos of me <laughs> so I also um, you know I would prefer him uh, and uh, and um, he is the GPS <laughs> for me because he can use the navigation uh, really efficiently and he will make sure that we are not lost so the next part is I'm going to show you your cue card and okay. then you're going to talk about it. And this is your cue card. Okay. Well, lately I'm into making sculptures out of clay, you know, made of clay. And uh, I, I became interested in doing this from a YouTube video. Uh, I first watched the video and I decided to, you know, have... Uh, one so I ordered the uh, clay and the set in general they're selling clay sets and now I've been doing it for one year I guess and um, I found it really meditating because it uh, makes me calm and um, I also um, be so um, pleased with the final product because the fact that actu I actually made it really makes me happy and um, you know uh, it has a meditating effect and it also um, uh, give me a chance to uh, uh, pr uh, give presents to my family and friends that uh, the clay sculptures that I made and uh, it's also a great, you know, uh, souvenir for them, I guess. And I also display it in my room. And um, and the fact that I can paint them, I can shape shape them, uh, whatever I like, uh, is really um, enjoyable. And um, I think. Um, it's also uh, made me more creative person and it's 
uh, you know, help with my imagination and uh, my eye and uh, brain uh, coordination, you know, because I didn't know that I am that good at sculpturing and shaping things. Mm -hmm. Are you done? Yes. Is it enough? <laughs> Uh, it's been two minutes, so it should be enough. Okay. It should be enough. Do you think having a hobby is good for people's social life? In what way? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think uh, it's good for social life because, you know, you have a topic to talk about when you are with your friends. You can uh, talk about them. Uh, you can talk about your hobbies with them and um, it will create new topics and it will um, uh, it will um, you know work as a spotlight and uh, you can um, talk about a certain hobby and it can be a good conversation starter I guess Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any negative effects of a person spending too much time on their hobby? And what are they? Um, you know, uh, it can uh, waste time, I guess, because we have responsibilities to do. And um, I know that hobbies are, you know, fun and many people enjoy doing them. But uh uh, time management is also key to actually enjoy uh, from your hobby because it's all it's uh, only good it's only enjoyable when you do it uh, in a special occasion in a special day in your leisure leisure time you know not every day every time because it will be detrimental for your uh, financial uh, stability because you also have to work and uh, do your responsibilities mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay in your country how much people how much time do people spend on work and how much time on leisure is this a good balance do you think I think they work a lot, um, you know, more than they should, because um, the companies are forcing them to uh, be more productive. And it's a hustle culture doing that, I guess, because um, it's always a rat race for most of the people and they can't find enough time for uh, their hobbies. And I think there is no balance in my country because um, many people couldn't even afford uh, to have a hobby because it's also about, you know, about monetary. It's a monetary issue to have a hobby because um, equip equipment, equipment also, you know, um, expensive uh, when you're planning to have a certain hobby and uh, I guess uh, there should be a balance and uh, I really hope one day um, the people in my country um, uh, can also be able to you know um, interested in new things and uh, have new hobbies Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you think people will have more or less free time in the future and why? Uh, let me think. Uh, uh, I'm in two minds about this because um, I know that technologies, the improvements of technology really made our life easier. But um, when I'm thinking about the future, I also um, reckon that, uh, you know, there will be 
I think there will be more responsibility for us to do because like um the economies are going um uh, down and it's a world thing you know it's not uh just a one country's problem right now and i think people uh, will uh, be more um uh, i think people will feel like they're in a red race more than ever and uh like there will be many side hustle for them to do and uh i i think we won't be able to you know have a leisure time and um yeah i also think that maybe it can be better but like i said i'm in two minds about this but yeah i i, I don't know we will see i guess we have this one and it's very very good so a simple question like do you enjoy being a student can be answered in many different ways so teacher i don't know what to say what should i talk about oh so do you question comes up and then first you give confirmation for example i can really say i enjoy being a student this sentence mm -hmm. will help you gain some time for you to form an answer, an idea, and a proper sentence. First, you start with a confirmation. And then you give reasons because you confirm that you like it. And then why? Why do you like it? Mm -hmm. Why? Because I don't have a wide range of responsibilities. You have got your reasons and then give examples. It feels amazing. And then explain why does it feel amazing? Because when I finish my assignments and daily studies, I can do whatever I want. That's your explanation. And you can also have more ideas. For example, you can give numbers, time, date, age. For example, I usually study for three hours on a daily basis and then spare some time for social activities too. And then you can talk about a past experience. You can give a reference to the future. Okay, let's have a look at the past experience. I can vividly remember here we have used the phrase. I can vividly remember. It's very mm -hmm. good. I can vividly remember that when I was a university student, I once studied for five hours at the school library, and I went, when I got home, I was feeling extremely exhausted. Instead of saying I was tired, mm. we have used a different phrase, extremely yeah. exhausted, right? Yes. I was extremely exhausted. So, And then you can give a future reference. For example, in the future, in the future, I will be more cautious about not tiring myself to burn out. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then you have given a future reference. Now you have lots of things to talk about, right? Yes. You, have, you have talked about the past, the future simple present you have given lots of examples and what you need to do for speaking part two is to spice up your answer you focus on one thing and you talk about it for two for two minutes mm -hmm. that's not what we actually expect we expect you to give like examples explanations numbers past experience you know a couple of things a couple of different things. Here is another one. I will read the question and you will read the answer. Do you enjoy being a self-employed person? I can say I really enjoy running my own business. I can work whenever I want. It feels free because I don't have a bus. Sometimes I can arrange my working hours in accordance with my mood. I can decide how busy I will be. I started running my own business three years ago, and I usually work five days a week. Then I take days off at the weekend. Last year, 
One day, a customer called me and said there was a dead pigeon on a pallet and asked us to go and scrape it off. It was a shocking ex experience for us. Anyway, every business has ups and downs and interesting moments. As for my business, I'm planning to attract more customers through sales funnels. As you can see, we have given like a very proper answer. The band score for this one would be at least seven or seven and a half. Okay, we don't talk about the same thing. We have used different phrases and structures. It can be both grammatical or in terms of vocabulary. And um, we have talked about a few different things. So we didn't focus on single topic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Let's have a look at other one. So we also teach note taking skills because, you know, during part two, you don't have the chance to write down everything. So we write little, very short keywords to remind us of what we are going to talk about, right? Instead mm -hmm. of saying, even these ones are very, very long, okay? So you just say, like, enjoy, res no responsibility. Instead of writing no, you can just put a cross, right? Mm -hmm. Amazing, yeah. you know, finish studies, free, three hours, social activities, you know? It will remind you of what you're going to talk about. See? Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, do you enjoy being a student? I think we have written a model answer for this one. Let me have a look. I haven't seen that one. Let's focus on this one. Do you usually see your friends? during the week or at the weekends. Here, as you can see first, we give confirmation and then give reasons, give examples, give explanations. See, uh, we have spiced things up. So mm -hmm. we have lots to talk about. We have the chance to use different tenses and a range of vocabulary. Especially when it comes to IELTS speaking part two, uh, so the second part, the second part, they expect you to use vocabulary related to the topic. For example, mm. if the topic is related to tourism, you must be able to use phrases like destination, hotspot, tourists, you know, these mm. are the vocabulary items that you should be able to use. Let's read this answer too. Can you read the answer, please? Okay. Uh, yeah, I can say I meet up with my friends during the week and we meet up because we love spending time together. For example, we go for a meal to eat homemade hamburg hamburger. We go for a meal because we love having a, having a conversation during a nice meal. We usually spend four to five hours together. The last time we met was three weeks ago and we went to forum. We did some shopping and had lunch together. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on to another one. Uh, let me have a look. Do you enjoy speaking English? Can you read it, please? Yes, absolutely. I take great pleasure in speaking English because I feel more confident when I speak in another language. Uh, I usually take advantage of English when I make new friends, watch films or read books. It also helps me with my work because I work with international clients. Uh, I have been learning English since I was 15. I study English for two hours every day. I study English five days a week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thanks, thanks to English, I met a lot of new people. For example, when I went to Spain in, 2000, uh, in 2017, I met a very interesting person. He was a traveler and he said he has been to 70 countries. Uh, we had a chat together and he told me about his life experiences. I have been studying hard to improve my skills in English for three months. In the future, I'm planning to improve my English skills more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
See? So we, we also have, talk we about have covered the lots of topics, right? Yes. Like yeah. explanation numbers, past experience, present perfect. It can Future, be also true. Yes. Yep. Yeah, it can be also true for part one, you know? Uh, you can mm -hmm. you can talk until they stop you. But here is the thing. Mm -hmm. Here is the thing, of course. Uh, don't repeat the information and don't go okay. off topic, okay? It mm -hmm. always goes around the same topic. So, of course, our goal is to talk more, but not to get out of the topic and talk about something else. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, the, the topics might be connected and related, but not off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I get it. That's about do you enjoy speaking English? Let's have a look at this one. Okay. Do, you, do you like shopping for clothes? Right. Um, yeah. yeah, I can absolutely say I'm keen on shopping. And I usually shop because I always feel like I have nothing to wear. For example, I shop for dresses and sneakers. I prefer buying at Horals. I get sneakers as they are comfortable uh, although i try to stop myself i shop at least twice a week i spend around nearly uh, 600 pounds per month uh, i lost bought a new pair of shoes today i'm planning to get a new bag from zara uh, it's a cute, cute small and i couldn't read it <laughs> yeah it's I'm, I'm done. Well done. <laughs> Green purse tomorrow. Okay, yeah. we also talked about the future. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> video lesson, you should watch it again and take okay. some notes. And I will send you uh, a set of questions and you should be able to write answers to them. Okay, yes. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks. So hopefully see you next week. And you, you should write your answers. You can write, you can send your answers to me. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye.